As the world recovers from the century-long last war, which devastated the population and left the great nation of Sire a smoldering ruin, the continent of Cover remembers those lost in the year of our kingdom, 982. However, as the world slowly heals, there was always something festering and growing ever hungry in the darkness. An elite organization known as the Bureau of Occultic Observations is always on standby, staying vigilant against any magical threat that may shatter this tenuous peace. This is their legacy. This is Tales of Adventure, Agents of Boo. Welcome back to Tales of Adventure, Agents of Boo. Boo! Delicious for you, babe. Love it. Keep keep doing it. Breezy, just keep being the wonderful person you are. Breezy's a horrible person. Well, I like Breezy. I mean, so Breezy's not mean, horrible. doesn't mean Breezy, just because you like Breezy doesn't mean Breezy's not horrible. Yes, it is. It means he's not horrible. I like horrible a lot life. of horrible people. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Exactly. Like Nicholas. Hey! I'm not, wait! <laughs> Exhibit A. Anyway! <laughs> shared a video of Anakin killing younglings when your ex said, I think I should buy food for my son. Spoiler alert. Anyway. I'm an FTK. My name, as always, <laughs> is Dapper Wombat. Dabby. And I am going to start over on my immediate right. <clears throat> it's the problem child of yeah, the Yeah, he's bunch. also still single. I, I am single, but I was just gonna say I'm the problem child of I'm the problem child of the group, but I'm your favorite bad boy in the band, Jared, aka Gil Darts. That's your new wrestling tagline. Uh, <laughs> your favorite bad boy in the band. Yeah. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I have a broken face. That's what's wrong with me. Well, so introduce you <laughs> with your busted face. Going over to Gil Darts's left. That's my right. To his right. To his left? Okay, it's your <laughs> turn. Back to you. That's a never-ending circle. <laughs> Back to you, Back to you Wombat. To Gildart's right. <laughs> my name is Leonard. Apparently, I have a busted face again. Um, I am the cleric. And now to the one who didn't get the job done. Oh. Mm. oh. Turn slightly to the left and That's he inclines his need. chair. Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, I'm the Matt. Rogue. Welcome to. Oh, this is an AA. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> not yet. It's not. Yet, it's not. <laughs> the night's still young. Not uh, NA, not AA. <laughs> Nick's obviously prettier and more talented than I am. Yay! <laughs> wow, I didn't know you told lies that easily. Fuck off! You kidding me? I'm a pro wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> next to next to Matt. Hi, um, it's your girl, your child, your... your my child? Uh, my your child. child. <laughs> your girl, your, your boy, child. whatever you my want. Boy. My test. The my, el- my eldest spawn. <laughs> <laughs> the fabulous Breezy Van Buren and your current PRW Women's Champ. The only champion. In the room. That's fine. you get your time to shine. Again. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and I am... Playing Ayana Dazzler, the half of Bard, and let's get it. Indeed. And last but not least, the man who is not a disembodied voice in my computer. Do, do, do. Say I can, hi. I, I can still access your computer. I mean, I know you can, yet you still don't know how to access a microwave. You know, we oh. have a new one the oh. other day. Mm-hmm. However, I figured it out before my mom did. Oh, well, that's good. Do you still know what a spork is? 
You don't need it to eat. I just, want, I just want to know one thing. Yes. Can we mess with the audience one day by getting him a voice box and you be like the disembodied and then he just go, my name is yes. David. <laughs> Definitely my not. And secondly, I forgot to ask this. You are not the only champion here. But also, I don't do wrestling. But I am a okay. three-time champion in martial arts, so. Oh, yeah. okay. So. Come on, champs. Mm, well, looks like we got our. This is the strong so side of the room. You can't sit I was us. a champion. Yeah, you that's can't okay. Sit that's with cute. Us. <laughs> so was he. That's so cute. <laughs> and as always, I'm just kind of here trying to keep a lid on the chaos and horribly failing to do so. I think you're doing a great job. Stop Thanks. kissing the DM's ass. <laughs> I'm trying not to die. <laughs> you're still gonna die. It doesn't hey. matter. You can certainly try. With all that That's being said, once again, I'm going to bring points. it over and see what Matt has in store to plug for Project Revolution Wrestling. Well, since I'm obviously not talented enough to get the job done, Ooh. I'm really not that good of a wrestler, so I'm actually going to turn it over to Mike Balls to do this ad. <laughs> no, hi, I'm Mike Balls. <laughs> <laughs> I have no self-confidence and I post memes to fill the empty hole that is inside. No, that's me. I also have women problems and the fact that they all want me but they don't know that I'm secretly homosexual. <laughs> I no, am no not! <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with being <laughs> homosexual. There's nothing wrong with that. Not, that. But I am not. Just to get um, that straight. I've seen you and Jared together. Which you are not. Are you kidding me? Only on Tuesdays, baby. <laughs> okay. And Sundays and Saturdays. Only on days. But if you go to PRW YouTube, you can see me try to be the cis white straight male that I try to portray in my everyday life. As Mike Balls, one half of the law firm of Dixon Balls, interesting name for a straight man. Wait, but it sounded like he was about to say, as I journeyed through my life as a, as a <laughs> the white cis male I tried to portray. On ice, you can catch me at the All-State Arena. <laughs> I wish I was it's at like, the All-State Arena. It's like, freeze frame. Hi, I'm Mike Balls. Yep, that's me. <laughs> I've been wondering how I got here. <laughs> oh, and just to be sh- just to get this straight. I'm not done with my advertisement. Your what? My advertisement. Advertisement? He knows what he said. Shut up and let him know. <laughs> I didn't choose the name Mike Balls. Shut it was chosen for me. Shut up, man. Shut up, man. So, check us out at, on YouTube at Project Revolution Wrestling. And remember, I love balls. I hate all of you. I hate it here. <laughs> oh, back to you, Wombat. Honestly, I don't know how the fuck I can top that. That's been on for like a good I three mean, fucking days. Don't you just top period? <laughs> I thought that, was, I thought that wasn't a choice in the Ooh. matter. <laughs> okay, first off, I'm a switch. All right, it's, it's getting warm. Oh yeah, we're gonna we gonna have to unpack that one later. <laughs> but we do not have enough room in our carry on to unpack all of that fucking luggage. Yep. Uh, once again, as always, you can always check us out on our various social medias that we'll be posting. But oh. also, we will be posting all of our podcast episodes. On our blog, reality is a social construct.wordpress.com. Again, that is R I A S C dot wordpress.com. Please come out, show your support, become a loyal member of the construction crew, as well as please go check out all of our lovely indie wrestlers at PRW. Go out and support your local Indians. I think that's what he said. Yep, Indians. Indians. I coined it. Weekend Warriors. Indians. Weekend Indi- Warriors? I like Indians better. See. I don't know. Just face it. I'm better do, coming up with catchphrases. I do want to now talk or about the project that we were talking about. Oh, yes, yes. Actually, yeah, actually, sorry. We actually have a new announcement that Jared and I have been talking about. Jared, so, can you please? You said we don't have time to unpack all the stupid luggage oh, that we have. No, I, I'm still single, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Ladies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, but... We, uh, if we get enough people to join the construction crew, that is our Patreon, which we have not yet set up, but we will get set up. If we get enough people to, we will be introducing a second podcast called The Lunch Break, which will give Daffy some time to write ahead, but it'll also give us a chance to just sit here and shoot the shit with me, 
being in charge basically they won't really be a topic I'll just be asking you guys random questions like how we met how you got into D&D &D. what's up with you you know what I'm saying what's things like yeah what's up with you <laughs> what's, up with you? what's up are with you are you from the damn DEA <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's up with you or like just you know random topics just to get our stupid nonsensical bullshit out the way our that stupid way we... nonsensical bullshit is never out of the way I, you know, I've been trying for like the past couple episodes to be like, we need it. It's like, nope, nonsense, go super bullshit. But all the fillers go in here. Yeah, this is all. This is all filler right now. <laughs> but thank you for that announcement, Jared. And yeah, we will. Oh, well, also, I forgot. Oh, it will also be called the lunch break. I do you like that. You did say. Well, maybe I'm not paying attention to what I say. All right. You know this. Now you understand. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be keeping everybody up to date with that, as well as any other news. Once again, the biggest thing you all can do is not only help support our local lovely indie wrestlers, but also to help support the channel, help support the blog. Because as much as we love doing this for like the absolute fun of it, you know, we also are kind of broke. <laughs> And yeah, very broke. Very, excuse me, very broke. And anything that would kind of help support that would give us more artistic opportunities to take bigger and make bigger and better projects. So I don't want to be sounding like I'm begging for money, but we're kind of begging for money. But we're please, please! <laughs> we're still gonna try our best. <laughs> With all of that being said, James, put a put a uh, headphone where it's warning in there, please. <laughs> With that all being said, unless anyone else has any other announcements they'd like to make. Uh, Bridgie's queer. Okay. Very. My, my we stand friend, by that. Mike's, I think, after my ad, Mike is finally ready to come out. Hey, you know what? And that's okay. I, what? We support you, Mike. We love you. Yes. Yeah. I like womans! I will love a woman. <laughs> <laughs> With all of that being said, let's take it back. To the world of Cover. Oh, we're about to get canceled. The <laughs> continent of Cover, the nation of Braylon, and back at the Bureau of Occultic Observations. James. Also known is, as? Oh, go ahead. Also known as? Boo. Boo. Okay. Let's do this just for <laughs> James, this is where, again, you can put the intro. This is just kind of something I'm trying new, so that way we kind of give you a little bit of clout once we get it. And we're going to be starting back up in five, you, Mike. four, <laughs> Fuck you, three, Branson. two, one. Yeah, start white. I didn't lose. So, back to Tales of Adventure. Last time on Tales of Adventure, Agents of Boo. You all got through your graduation exam and was ready for you send to debrief you all who to debrief you all i don't know why my voice just cracked i call it the debrief button as Tras decided to take a break where you send was just okay with it i guess <laughs> as you all went to your own semblance of corners after ayana getting her nose fully healed and Guild Arts getting a little bit more healed by the resident medic, Bone Setter, who seems to be a Bloodhound's daughter? Um, question mark. Uh, question mark? I mean, they seem, and she referred to him as, uh, referred to her as mom. So, but that's neither here nor there. Zhao Ken met with Zara and had a lovely conversation where Zhao Ken uh, <laughs> had a little present waiting for him that uh somebody mysterious who who mm, could have yeah. possibly known yeah, uh decided to hand you a small little box mm -hmm. containing your bureau That's of occultic observations badge mm -hmm. guild can, arts can we call it a boo badge you can call it a boo badge <laughs> you got your boo badge you have a boo, -boo. no you have a boo badge uh -huh. Guild Arts went to go to the psychiatric or to the medical ward to go get a psychiatric evaluation, met up with Bloodhound, and learned that not only is she like an ex, like a three time ex world heavyweight champion in the Fighters League, but also decided to go back and get a degree in psychology. 
We and here at this podcast also support you in your endeavors in like mental health. Yes. Mm. We are very want to make that obvious. We are very we are very big on that. So a bone setter is Bloodhound's daughter. It yes. used to be. Interesting. So Somebody had to anyone pick. else hearing what that sounds like? The conception of so, that child. So nope. after oh. somebody had taken a you had a <laughs> talk. Mike um, Wazowski. <laughs> after you all talked, Bloodhound kind of came to the conclusion that she doesn't think it's anything truly like concerning mental health though she is wanting to kind of have him run some tests just to kind of make sure and have a couple more sessions uh she think it might be tied in more to your rage and more with the ancestral hammer that you carry <sighs> trust when to go talk to vacry and get a rifle and get a rifle uh, mm-hmm. Vakri, as he was trying to press Vakri for a little bit more information, Vakri just simply was cryptic and said that, well, everyone else also had potential. After getting a slightly passive-aggressive note from Yesen, you all met up in the meeting room where Yesen debriefed everybody. Slightly passive-aggressive. Slightly in air quotes. Get to the um, fucking office now! Trast uh, showed up a little bit late with a rifle, and Yesen decided to acknowledge that Trast showed up late with a rifle um, and began to sip her, her hot tea. What a wonderful start to our adventures together, Trast. You all she learned... <laughs> you all learned the motivations of what drives the Bureau of Occultic Observations and what would be expected of you for your responsibilities as field agents. With that all being said, with Trust trying to poke and unsuccessfully trying to get Yesen to reveal more information about the mysterious lineage of Gildarts, she proceeded to leave, said that both she and Vakri will be back in a couple of days, only because they had a very important business meeting they had to attend to. But that you all should rest up, and in the morning, go talk with Penelope and Flack, also known as Fix-It and the Tin Man, to see and get you all fully equipped with your standard field agent equipment. Speaking of which... Yes. Did wasn't Fix It and the Tin Man the one that Beckery said I can get the uh, arcane focus from? That is correct. Okay. Fix It, sure. you all remember, was the goblin Penelope. She was the goblin artificer that you all met who gave you the loadout. Okay. And I definitely Tin Man, Tin Man was her. Yeah, Tin Man was the Warforge that was standing behind. Tin Man was born in the darkness. So, it you guys oh, gather that it's probably about like. 10 o'clock at night because you guys have actually been doing that for about a good couple of 18 hours what would you like to do we're gonna go get drunk okay you guys go to a spot in here um you can always go talk to somebody and see if there's a good bar bar spot around in the city of sharn i feel like that's the first thing that i would have did okay uh so she probably already knows where it is okay uh you go talk to fluffy and goes oh hey what's the uh, oh Looking for a bar? Um, yeah, you know, there's actually a pretty nice bar um, up in the, uh, the Middle Dura District. Karaoke? Of course. They got karaoke, they got drinks, they got food, and they kind of got people pit? waiting on you. Uh, not that I know of, though. There are a couple of fighting pits in the, in the city of Sean. Come on. You you guys have never been topside before, right? Oh, shit. This is your first time in Sean. Oh, fuck. All right. And you see, he goes, every, mo- every one of you motherfuckers, get dressed, we're going on the town. And you see Fluffy just kind of runs off. I love Fluffy. I look at Gildarts, wait, we agreed to go out? <laughs> I take him to his room so I can dress him up snazzy. Okay. Uh, what do you all decide to dress up as? Or, like, what do you guys decide to dress in? I drive. Let's what see. are you wearing? Oh, my God. Who uh, are you? Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, that's it. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with Zhao Ken. Oh, God, why? <laughs> Zhao Ken, what would you like to wear on your first night in town in Shard? Uh, honestly, actually, we'll, we'll go with like a little, um, just a nice. 
nice. I don't fucking know. <laughs> like a three piece suit. You want to go with like maybe a button up shirt and a vest. Actually, let's do this. You can also just wear a skirt because you know an un- gender is bullshit. We'll go with an unbuttoned shirt with okay. just like a t shirt and a nice fine necklace like this on it. And then just like some dark jeans and some nice ass shoes. Okay, that sounds great. Just casual. Okay. Ayana. Alright, first of all, you already know we started with the heels. Mm-hmm. Mm. Six inch pumps. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, booty shorts. Okay. But with leggings under them. Okay, fancy. You know, trying to trying to keep it a little bit classy. You okay. don't want to bring out the thought yet. Uh, <laughs> crop top mm-hmm. and a sleeve. The sleeve is like you know how they have. The yeah, it's like hanging off the shoulder. Yeah, hanging off the shoulder. And her hair is. We're doing pigtails again. Okay. But it's a lot longer now. So, long pigtails and two barrettes on the side. <laughs> Just to be fancy. Trust? What would you like? I am wearing an 8th century Gygax. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, but sure. Guy, you know. Um, so. Dress is just going to come out in a tattered shirt. Okay. And shorts that look like they've been through the ringer as well. Okay. Not really dressing up very much. Okay. Uh, however, he does keep the dagger with him. Okay. Sir Leonard. Sir. How does a turtle dress fancy? Oh. How doesn't the turtle dress A bow fancy? on the shell. <laughs> I was actually gonna go with that. He has a blue bow on his sh- on his shell. Mm-hmm. He's wearing a belt. Okay. Uh, he's still rocking that that cape. Yeah. The uh, cape's fancy as fuck. It it really is. You can't get fancier than the cape. Uh, and I'm debating on either a crown or a top hat. First off. You have a handlebar mustache, so always go with the fucking top hat. Okay, the top hat it is, then. All right. And lastly, Gildarts. Uh, Gildarts is wearing, you know, black jeans, really nice shoes, really nice boots, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, a dark blue shirt and a leather jacket. Uh, and he has earrings in. Like, kind of like the earrings, like... Like they, so they're like studs or they hoops. Like they, they, they go in your ear and then have this little like that drop. Like oh, right there. are they kind of like gauges? Uh, not gauges. Um, you know, like the earrings you put in your ear and then there's a little like thing. Oh like yeah, a, yeah, 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 like a little, little drop. Yeah, like the little teardrop thing it turns yeah. into like that. He has those in in one ear, <laughs> and uh, and then he's but he was trying on different outfits and he did that. He was like this. Like, he, Jao Ken was ready. He was like, fine, just get dressed and get something on. And I'm like, what about this? And he's just like, yeah. And then I was just like, oh how about this? And he's just like, like I'm just going to take the book he had and just him up with that. Get dressed uh, already. Uh, <laughs> that's it. I'm not going. <laughs> Punches him in the nose. And then, I get dre- and then I get dressed. And I also have a small nose ring okay. on my right side. Before okay. we leave, I just look at him. Hoop. Hoop nose oh. ring. So. I was about to say, I look at the book. Want to leave this with Zara? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hold on to this for us somewhere. Yeah. You guys have I'm gonna fun. leave I'm gonna leave Tycho with you too. Right. Oh, hi buddy. Right. And you see Tycho just kinda like snuggles up into Zara and just kinda falls asleep. He's like, Yes. And you see Zara is just kinda petting Tycho and goes, Yes, Tycho is good. Tycho will suffice. Alright. <laughs> we should head out now. And you see like he's I, still petting. And I put like, my hammer on my back and then I'm, I'm ready to go. I look at him. Really gonna bring that? It doesn't leave my side. That's true. I already brought my knives with me anyway. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Alright. I don't you need all... weapons. I have my claws. My <laughs> I my square up. up. <laughs> I will square up. Okay. I'm squared up to a suit of armor and I'll square up to anything else. Oh, okay. Mine are in my sleeves. So. I love it. So, you all go and you actually are waiting by one of the entrances that Fluffy told you to wait by. And after a couple of minutes, you see before you, you hear someone go... All right, so is everyone, excuse me, <clears throat> all right, so is everyone ready to go now? And you see, walking in front of you in Why is a, he in a di- 70s very disco outfit? casual 70s disco, disco outfit, <laughs> you see yes. a human in front of you, but you see that he has almost like a leather bandana across his head, and he goes, what? 
You guys ready to go or not? I didn't know you were a transient jester. What? Oh, oh, right. So, bit, bit thing about a uh, bit thing about Sean and Sean and Breland. Um, first of all, they don't like my kind. I, I am a hobgoblin, and technically speaking, you human or like humanoid creatures sure as shit did steal this land from us. Ooh. So, Ooh. <laughs> but you know they don't like us here. So, in order for me to go out in public, if I'm not in my own, uh, you know, I'm you know if I'm not on field duty. I gotta wear this. And you see he points to the leather bandana that he's wearing, and you see that he takes it, the minute he takes it off, poof, he turns back into his bu- his normal bug bear appearance, huh. puts it back on, poof, and he looks like a regular human. And you see that he has, like, um, in his human form, you see that he has, like, dark caramel skin, um, almost kind of, like, very, like, like, almost like someone was working on the sun, so, like, suntan. And you see that he has, like, this very beautiful raven black, uh, raven black hair that's kind of pulled back in a short ponytail. And you see he has, like, very uh, beautiful piercing green eyes. I was kind of just looking at him like, wow. She's, like, trying to look under the headband, I mean, the uh, bandana, like, how does that work? You see he just kind of bends down, and you see as you're kind of, like, pulling it, it still looks like a human scalp line. He goes, oh, well, you know, it's, it's magic. I mean, it just, it's more powerful than, like, a... We call it glamour, cause uh, you know, for me, bloodhound, packmaster, dead mother, more of the fur. They don't really like our kind here, so we kind of have to blend in a little bit. But <coughs> this glamour is a little bit stronger of like a greater illusion spell. So not only does it look like I'm human for the most part until I take this off, I'm practically human. Huh. I had those eyes just light up like as soon as you say glamour, she's just like, "Can I try it on?" Uh, well, this is attuned to me, but you can definitely talk to Penelope. You guys are talking to Penelope tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can talk to Penelope. If I try it on, it won't look like you? Uh, no, it won't work. Uh-huh. It, it's attuned to me, which means I, I attuned to it. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you all ready to go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I'm always ready. And he goes, and, he goes and like, oh, Trash, you, you don't want to put on... I mean, I'm not to, not to diss your, your style and your drip. But, um, you sure you don't want to put on anything else? Well, you said that we had to, or it sounded like we were dressing in non-bureau clothing. I mean, we all look right. Oh, <laughs> right. Um, here, let me, let me see if I can help you out with it. And you see that he actually, like, pulls out yeah, a... this is the only um, non-bureau clothing I own. Right, right. Vacry did pick you up. Um, actually, I have an idea. Give me one second. You see, he kind of runs back and, like, two minutes kind of runs back. He goes, okay. And you see that he has a bow tie with him, and he kind of like, give, he kind of like picks it over your. He, <laughs> is not, he puts yeah. it on you, and he goes, "All right, all right." So, close your eyes and do a little thought exercise for me. Think about what you would want to wear with the bow tie on. Think about it. Go ahead. Think about it out loud. Is that what you right. said? I can not hear it. You know what he meant. <laughs> like, wait a so, what's it gonna be? Okay, so Trash thinks about it. I'm assuming when I don't think he did, will You think so? Okay, so I think of. I've seen Vekri go out before. Yeah. So I'm thinking like he would. Uh, some nice slick black dress boots. Yeah, you know Vekri would go like fucking like fancy gothic. Yeah. Almost, uh, or like stylish gothic. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna do the dress black boots, mm-hmm. uh, some nice black slacks, yeah. a undershirt, just a black undershirt mm-hmm. with um, with the eyeshadow that he would usually wear. Okay. However, I don't really understand his style, mm-hmm. so my hair stays the same, so you just see this messy brown hair that does not match the rest of the look. <laughs> um, uh, can anybody... You you have a lot of hair. Can you do anything with his hair? Oh, my God, are we giving it... And you see Fluffy <laughs> goes, oh, my God, are we giving him a fucking makeover? Do we have time for Makeover! It? Oh, shit, let me... And you see he yeah, pulls out, like, his... You Fluffy pulls out his hair supplies. He's like, ah, oh, don't worry, you're in good hands, right? I, I grabbed him so he can't escape. <laughs> What's hey. And you see both Fluffy and Ayana are actually, like, doing your hair. 
what, and you what see Fluffy just kind of like takes a couple of like um like a couple of rubber bands and kind of puts it nice and you see like he gives you this really nice like shaggy brown hair look like it's um what's it, it looks like hmm like it, it hmm that's a good question what does it look like uh <laughs> Hair? Well, I mean, yeah. Why, why, you forgot, why you forgot what it looks like? We'll throw around ideas about what we should do. I say we cut it. Look, I cut mine. It there looks you know. like a messy pompadour. Uh, yes. Hey, I used to have one of those. Yes, you actually all see now that, like, trashed his hair is almost kind of like this very nice, messy pompadour. And you see that uh, Fluffy takes, like, a little a little bit of the bow tie and kind of scrapes it off and sprinkles it in your hair. And you see that your hair <laughs> turns black to match the rest of the outfit. Nice. Doing it natural, so nobody would notice. What just happened? Oh, so uh, that's magic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's magic, you know. Never believe it's not so. Please don't sue us for using that. Um, I think it, I think you're fine. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, you go. So, are you all ready to see the sights and to see what the fuck the City of Towers is all about. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, yes. Why not? All right. And yes. As we're walking, mm -hmm. I want to keep an eye out for a cricket. Okay. A cricket. If I hear one or see one, please let me know immediately. Okay. As you all go and make your way out, I am going to reveal to you a little history of Sharn. <clears throat> Sharn also known as the City of Towers and the City of Golden Opportunity, is the capital city of the country of Breland. The reason why it's called the City of Towers is that the entire infrastructure of the surrounding area was built on a specific magical, almost like semi-portal that's not fully open called a Manifest Zone. This particular Manifest Zone, unlike the rest of the world that kind of pop up randomly, this one has a unique ability of the manipulation of gravity, where gravity is actually a little bit lighter here. So when they mean city of mile high towers, they mean that they can build these towers at least a mile high, maybe two. So far, no one's tried to go for two yet. The city itself is broken up into three distinct districts, and even then broken up into other ways. You have the Skyway, which is basically this almost isolated, floating neighborhood where all of the rich elite and usually powerful people of monarchs would live or kind of visit with the various airships um, shanging about. Then you have the Upper Dura, the Middle Dura, the Lower Dura, and the true heart of the city, known as the Cogs, which is basically like the city built underneath the city. We built this city you, on another city. <laughs> you all see as you kind of hit the streets that you can hear the various noises of sounds and like um, you see like elemental engines that kind of look almost like uh, more sleek and modern versions. Like if a Tesla and a Model T had a baby, Ooh. they kind of looked as you see them kind of going on these very beautiful paved streets. It looks and it kind of feels with a lot of this electricity in the air. You see various people about the town going through their daily. You see a halfling riding a velociraptor in a specific lane in the city. You see a bus full, it's like you see a bus full of different shapes and sizes of fur balls of it seems to be this very beautiful melting pot and you just see above you and hear the various creatures air taxis flying around you see a griffin on its mount arr, follow and kind of take to the skies and you see fluffy kind of takes a breath and goes well because this is your first time i'm paying for the transportation so i'm gonna ask do you all want to walk, take the Skyway, or take the sub route? Skyway, 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 please say Skyway. What was the first? Skyway. Skyway. What was the second one? Walk. Walk. Sub route. Do you want to go up, stay in the middle, or go down? Well, <laughs> Skyway! 
I got one for Skyway. Come on. Skyway going one. Uh, Skyway. Go Skyway's going one. Skyway. Two. Skyway. Woo! All right. You guys follow me. And you will <clears throat> follow as you are just, like, seeing these very beautiful sights of, like, li- of flashing fairy lights. You see the street lamps are alive with these very beautiful, like, dancing elemental creatures made of pure magic. You see various, almost like billboards, like lit up with these neon sign-like elementals, as you can sign to see them dancing in this plane that they are existing in. Do I see any merchants? You do, actually. As you do come out, you do see that there are various, not only various stores that kind of have in place, but like market stalls. It seems to be the alley that you all came out of. Seems to be attached in the middle Dura and particularly in Sharn's, technically Sharn's equivalent of a night market. Is there a flower stall? You do see a flower stall. Okay, I forgot the name of the various leaves. Yeah. Fluffy. Fluffy. Fluffy? Yeah. Um, I kind of spent all my gold in the demon house for graduation. Yeah. Could, could you cover me for a rose yeah i got you kid and you see he kind of like flips you uh he flips you a silver piece and goes should be more than a silver i'll be right back yeah i'm gonna go to the vendor yeah and you all are like still just kind of like barking like you hear like merchants barking their wares you see people like pedaling out on the street a you see a tiefling uh with its full this is very bright and flamboyant costumes with its hand with its horns kind of like growing out and back like a ram's you see that they are kind of like dancing with this fire pole that they're just kind of seemingly to like swirl around their body. You see another, um, you see another performer, which seems to be a halfling teaching their uh, dinosaur this smaller scale um, brontosaurus doing tricks. <clears throat> As Ayana you... is kind of just running around like just oh look at her oh my god yes and everything and like y'all are trying to like keep her under control and make sure she doesn't run the fuck off anywhere. <laughs> you see Fluffy's like no oh, <laughs> stop fucking Jesus we're gonna have to keep a leash on you okay. <laughs> As you get up, to running, she's running, running in heels. <laughs> yeah, no, she's running in heels. That's the most impressive part. <laughs> Acrobatics, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> As you get up oh, to yeah, <laughs> the flower stall, you see a tiefling woman. <laughs> running it but you see that her horns and she you see that she has reddish almost greenish skin kind of like pigments uh where some parts almost seem to be like tree bark um and you see that her horns actually grow out almost like a cross between deer antlers and tree branches and you see they have these very beautiful like flowers decorated with a nice lovely flower crown she goes oh hi my name's Celine. Is there anything I can help you with? Hello, Celine. I was just wondering, do you carry... Could, could, could I get a rose? Of course. Is there a particular rose that you're looking for? Um, just a rose. Just a rose. And you see, she goes, she hands her hand out. Uh, how much? A silver. A, a full silver? Uh, would, you, would you do it for five cup? Make me a persuasion check. <laughs> Sucker! <laughs> Too silver. <laughs> no. Well, shit. I'm 20 silver now. 17. 17 persuasion? Yep. So What's that, charisma? Yep. yep. 19. 19. You see, she looks at you and goes, mm-hmm. Normally I would charge a silver, but I think I can make a special. I think. I can make a special, special discount for you. And she kind of gives you a little bit of a wink. I, I appreciate that. Of course, dear. And I hand her a silver piece. <laughs> Hands you a silver piece and gives you back uh, your change. And you see, as she does that, you see her hands kind of like spindle together almost. And you see the bottom hand is open with the palm. And the top hand is almost kind of like sprinkling in this like very beautiful druidic energy that kind of looks like... Um, fireflies raining down and you see out of her palm this very beautiful and intricate rose sprouts up and you see she kind of takes it wow and gently plucks it and hands it to you you see that she kind of holds it that was impressive 
That's normally why I charge a silver. I understand and respect that, and I hand her back her chain. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Enjoy. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. I join the group. You see that she puts the money back, and you all join the group, and you see that, uh, you see that Tress has this very beautiful rose, and it looks like a normal rose, but you see the petals kind of, like, open just right, and you can see bits of, like, almost, like, water that kind of, like, make the rose glisten. Like dewdrops. Dewdrops, yes. The dewdrops that kind of almost, like, when it hits the light, gives off this very beautiful shine. Did you get me a rose? It's not for you. Oh. Sorry, Leonard. So, we all ready to go hit the Skyway? I'm ready to go to the bar. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, don't worry. I know this really great place. It's called the Craftsman. It's really great. I know the dude. Trast, uh, Trast is a fucking, oh. Trast is a fucking favorite of ours. Don't worry. We gotta take the Skyway, though. Cause he Trast? Is, uh, yeah, Trast. I, Trast? No, no, not you. Other Trast. There's another one? Yeah. Um, I don't want to deal with another I mean, one. <laughs> you know, if it's too confusing, you can always just call him Trent. Okay. Let's go. All right, let's go. Mm. And you see, uh, as you guys go, you guys get mm. to a little station where you see people kind of like in line waving, almost like what you would do to wave down a taxi. Uh, you see that people are kind of like on this little platform, and you see these like gondola-like boats kind of stride up with these people, like, with these, uh, like, gondola-like oars, almost. People hop on, they pay their money, the boat, the ferryman gives them a coin, and they jet off. When it gets to your turn, you see that your gondola, or your ferry boat, a ferryman looks like a, excuse me, looks like a gnome, and you see them go, hi, my name's Rudy, uh, I can be your ferryman today so uh where are you guys going the bar all right any uh, any particular bar and you hear uh um fluffy go yeah you know we're going over and he kind of gives some instructions oh yeah 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 here um that'll be um uh, that'll be about gold would, uh, piece from would this be happen to be i you know i knew somebody that lived in this that lived in the city once upon a time you know that, be that crass sailor well, I'm gonna get to that, so don't worry. Mm, mm. You all. No, I'm asking. The, I'm asking the driver. Would this be the crash sailor? Mm, the crash sailor. I mean, that was in the lo- that was in the cogs, but I think the bar that one burned down a good couple of years ago, and I think they reopened over here at the the Craftsman. I think. <laughs> yeah. Girl. So um. Okay, and you see Fluffy kind of hands him a gold piece. He goes, all right, everybody, uh, step in the boat, please. Everyone keep their hands and feet in the boat at all times. And you see that um, the ferryman <laughs> hands you all each what appears to be a little bit bigger than a gold coin, but it has, like, a blue circle in the middle, and it has a picture of a boat. And he goes, all right, fair warning, hold on to that coin because that may save your life just in case. You do fall over, all you do is crush the coin and you will float gently to the ground. With that being said, is everyone ready? Yeah. Let's Let's go! go! And you see, as he kind of like, almost like pushes his oar through water, you see the runic carvings and the crystals on the oar light up with this blue energy, and the boat goes. As you are like, essentially flying through the air, like a good couple of thousands of feet. I don't know if I mentioned this, but Sir Leonard might be scared of heights. Okay. Uh, (laughs) You know what? Go ahead and roll a pure luck check. Oh, no. What have I done? All of us are just Sir Leonard. Just Sir Leonard, (laughs) because he mentioned it. (laughs) What have I done? I don't know. What have you done? Well, (laughs) let's just, before, let's just mention that this is Nick's first roll with his own pair of dice. Woo! Uh, and we're still waiting for the roll. <laughs> Shut up! Um, I'm just gonna look at you. Really? What'd you get? What'd you roll? Seven. You don't add anything to it. Seven. I know. I'm just trying to hide. 
<laughs> yes, yeah, Sir Leonard, you're fucking afraid of heights. Yeah. <laughs> you realize that you're afraid of heights. You all see Sir Leonard just kind of... <laughs> 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 my uh, shell is my uh, best right, defense. Right, oh, right, good! Right. I have somewhere I can sit. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> you just sit on Sir Leonard's shell. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Come on up, then I will get off of you. Please, <laughs> <laughs> no, that sucks. I have to like just hanging off the edge, like yeah. No, 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 no. Hair's dangling in the uh, sky, just like oh, so pretty. I'm grabbing her, like no, 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 no. Is it hands and feet? Waterfall. Waterfall. Hands and feet in the vehicle, kids. You know, you don't, you don't want to fall. I mean, you could, but like, you just fall. Dude, your shell's really comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. I got Thank clean you guys. Often. As you all are kind of zooming and seeing through the city, you do see like various like, were you see various like, wyverns and like, wyverns and griffins and pegasi. Like you see a flock of pegasi with different noble like. Uh, noble regal looking people flying off into Skyway and you can see now that Skyway is probably about the size of a small city that is just floating beautifully on this large giant crystal that is glowing giving this a little bit more of this um, giving a little bit more luminescence with the moon this bright moon and these lovely stars it was the um it's just the, basically the party area of the... Yeah. So do we start hearing loud music now at this point? Yeah, you all hear and you basically hear like sounds of trumpets as big brass bands are swinging mixed in with like these very funky and very energetic, almost like for the real world equivalency, these electronic beats. Um, almost like, again, real world equivalency, it's basically electro swing. As you just hear like these bands going, you hear these different... Uh, clubs going out. What's that noise? Oh, it's a, it's, well, uh... It's one of my favorite bands. I'm not going to tell you their name, but they, one of their songs goes, One more time. Oh, yeah, you are talking about the, uh, the Dafty Fellows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a, a racket over here. Uh, well, technically, it's... I don't know it's technically a racket. They got a racket up here somewhere, but you guys are going to the Craftsman, right? Yeah. All right, and you see, after taking a little bit of time... You all dock on the side where you see like this long waiting list and you see this very nice and humble, almost like an upscale bar with a title of the crap, like of crass, but the sign seems to have been a little bit burnt and the other half of the sign that says man. You're going in first. <laughs> I'm not going in first. You're going in Is first. Is there something no. going on here? No, you are. He goes, ah, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can, I can get us in, guys. Don't worry. I'll be, I'll be right back. And you see, Fluffy disappears. Is this, we're, are we missing something from you two? Should we explain out of character? Yeah. Okay. At but, OC. Okay. Very so, first D and D campaign. Also, James, you can cut that out, out of character. Yeah, you can yeah, cut that out. Very first uh, D and D campaign. We went to a bar with a guy named Trent, who owned a bar called the Crass Sailor. The C and the R were messed up, so it just looked like it said the Ass Sailor. Sailor. <laughs> That's not the only thing, also. We also had a second campaign, where it was just me and Jared as our characters. We are also the ones who are responsible, well, not me, you, are responsible for burning down the damn bar in the first place and turn coming after you. I didn't burn down the bar. I got him arrested. Oh, the... Same difference. Same shit. <laughs> difference in the... And we are picking back up in five, four, three, two, one. As Fluffy kind of disappears, you all have a brief moment for yourselves. Is there anything you all wish to do, or just wait till Trent comes back? I'm just dancing in the street. One yeah. more time. You hear, like, music is just, like, bumping. Well, not, actually not, not, like, extravagant dancing, just, like, that little, like, small shuffle. People yeah, no, like, the you club. actually uh, see other people, like, dancing. You see, like, an, uh, an orc going, like, yeah, man, like those moves. And you see these just kind of, like, busting a r Like, he's basically chopping up a rug. I'm uh, just doing that, like, small, like, shuffle that you do when you wait outside the club to get yeah. in. Just, like... Ida finds a cute girl and dances with her like, yes, yeah, bitch. Okay. She goes, oh, hey. And you see that she is this elven 
woman. Mm. Uh, you know, like this very beautiful, almost like style of like a 1920s flapper. Yeah, Darcy definitely has a tie. Um, <laughs> you see that she has kind of like her short hair cropped into her like little bonnet, and she's just kind of like dancing with you. Her skirt is almost kind of like a mini skirt, mm. except the rest of it goes down to her ankles, and the rest of it is like these very beautiful like beads, these like almost like jeweled beads. As she's just kind of dancing, you can kind of hear the sequins and the bees kind of clapping with you. Yes! She's like, yeah! I love it! You're so full of life. I love it. Thank you! As, tra- as Fluffy comes back and goes, all right, you guys ready? Yes. Yep. All right, let's go! And you see he kind of like leads everybody through. He goes, excuse me, pardon me, coming through, coming through. And you see at the head, two... Dwarven bouncers, both with their arms crossed, jacked to the nine, it's like jacked to the nine hells, mm. tattoos <laughs> scarred on their hands, up their forearms, and even onto their necks. And you see uh, Fluffy goes, Ah, Svenny, Georgie, has it hanging? And you see they kind of look at uh, Fluffy and goes, Ah, what's going on, Xavier? He's like, Ah, you know, just living the life. Uh, me and my friends get in. He goes, yeah, sure. Come on in. And you see that they open the doors. Y'all kind of has a type. Ayana's <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. Xavier. Mm. Yeah, you know, uh, I go by a couple of names. They call me Xavier. They call me uh, Alexandria. Uh, Alexandria I'm really proud of. Uh, you know, because and you see he kind of like, kind of looks around a little bit and kind of like uh, presses his thumb into his throat and you kind of hear a little click and he goes well you know I do have that ability that lovely little ability that I can do and he kind of like takes it off I have to just like so X her. first round on you yeah. I have fucking sure there we go as you get in you see that this place is popping it is like a mix of a dance club and a lounge where you see different waiters and waitresses serving drinks on platters to people who are sitting but also there is a bar in a dance floor area where people are just cutting the rug the air is electrifying the band is in full swing and it is just fantastic i go to the lounge and find the, the most comfy seat in the lounge that i can find okay you have a seat on the lounge and you see uh walking up to you is a orc man he goes ah oh, good evening sir my name is sir garlic if there is anything that you would like? My man uh, Xavier over there is taking care of the bill. Ah, yes. But uh, let me get a an ale. Ah, of course. Is there any particular size you would like, sir? Tell me about your sizes. I'm well, just looking at him. Oh God. Well, <laughs> to cater to all manners of all needs, we have sizes ranging from fairy to gnome, halfling, human. Oh, excuse me. Halfling, elven, human, dwarf, and practically up to giant size. Give me giant. Of course, sir. Right away. And you said I put it on that man's bill? Yes. Would you like it to be... Would you like to fancy it up a bit for two... For two platinum pieces more? No. I'm fine. Very good. There's a reason. I'm good. Very good. And you see that he kind of runs off. Yes, what, what would anyone else like to do? What is that fancy stuff you were referring oh, to? Oh, the platinum? That, oh, yes, for the uh, fancy it up. That's a, to- that's a, um, a, a coin, or excuse me, a term that we have coined here. Essentially, for if you pay for two platinum pieces more, uh, your drink is served in an enchanted glass that, as you drink it, magically refills itself. Fluffy, can I get that? <laughs> Let me go ahead and get that. Of course. In orc size, please. Orc size. Fluffy, can I get that? He goes, yeah, fucking sure, I don't care. I upgrade mine, too. Oh, yes, very good. Very good. Would any of you all uh, like any drink? I'll just take a hard whatever you got, something hard. <laughs> very good. I don't care. Well, the, 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 I look, one of the bouncers. I look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I grabs your shoulder. I look at you. I'm kidding. I'm just like this. Well, the bouncers were kind of hard. Yeah, I know. Ah, I see. So that means that you would like. I'll take uh, that and a drink. 
He kind of looks at <laughs> You see Svenny just kind of looks at you a little bit. Kind of wings and puts up his shades and kind of goes back to looking at the door. Roll for seduction. I, in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what would everyone else think? I want you? something cute and bubbly. Ah, I and think. And fruity. He's standing in the corner over there. <laughs> I think we can arrange that. If you'll excuse me for a moment, I can go get your drinks. I'll fancy mine up too. Uh, uh, same, uh, same, same. Of course, of course. Nice oh, yes, before. I'm so sorry. Uh, Master Turtle, is there anything I Master can get Master Turtle. <laughs> Ooh, Master Turtle, I like that. Yes. Um, it's the cape, truly. Truly, the cape gives I'm you behind him like magnificence. This. I'm behind him holding up the cape. You're, you're <laughs> self-bellowing the cape? Yes. Okay. Ooh, I feel... I'll take a giant-sized chocolate milk. Ah, very good. Would you like me I just to fancy that up for you, sir? Huh? Would you like me to fancy that up for you, sir? Yes. Of course. Very good. And you see that he kind of like uh, walks away. And you see Fluffy's like, oh man, this is great. I mean, yeah, no, go go ahead and go nuts. I, I'm not paying for it. What? Yeah. What? What What do you mean? I thought you said first round was on you. Yeah, first round is on me, but I am paying for it. What is it? How? And you see, um, as you say how, you hear, well, I guess the how is not necessarily, uh, the real sticking point now is it? <laughs> and you see, uh, walking towards you all and like giving, uh, patting Xavier on the shoulder is this very beautifully dressed, like with the sleek ass vest, this very beautiful button up shirt, the, like this immaculate uh, bow tie, these very nice dress pants, and this orc with a broken jaw that kind of sticks to the side a little bit, so he's talking out of one side of his mouth, and he goes, Hi, how you doing? My name is Trastor, you can call me Trent Han. I shake his hand. Nice to meet you, and you see he kind of like, Whoa. his hand. He goes, yeah, I'm the, uh, well, <laughs> welcome to the Crash Man. I look at Gildart, did he just crash your hand? It almost. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, a little bit of reflexes from my old adventuring days. Damn. Quite a grip. Yeah. He goes, so, uh, you're the ones that work with the... He goes, so, you're the newcomers, right, that work with the sports team? And you see he kind of gives you guys a wink. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Tell me, how's the, how's the old team doing? Dead. Oh, Get dead. tired. Yeah. Get tired. Oh, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Well, I mean, and you see Xavier just kind of goes, he's like, they don't know what you're fucking talking about. And he goes, I, I know, I'm just messing with you. L- listen, I I know. I, I, don't worry. You guys are safe. This is one of the one of the places we'll use. But, I mean, have fun. <laughs> After all, all members drink free here. And you see, he kind of winks. He goes, but take your time. I'm in no rush. If you need anything, let me know. Why does Gildars look like he's in shock? <laughs> uh, uh, Gildars isn't in shock. Gildar sees his drink coming out, though, now. And yeah. it's just like, ooh. You do see this massive, like, 32 ounce mug in this very beautiful, like, beer stein, like, runic carved uh, stein. I look at him, look at him. I bet you can't finish it in five seconds. I, I, I go like this. What? It's already gone. And then it refills. <laughs> and, and it refills. What? I said you have to finish the whole thing in five seconds. But since it's unrefillable, I guess I'll win this bet. He's hmm. <laughs> like, it's like, it's stop me from trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Are you all going to go for this? <laughs> no. Yes or no? No, I said no. Okay. No, I'm just gonna drink. Okay, you guys are gonna drink. gonna drink. So you're just gonna nurse your drinks? I'll just look. I'll just look, I'll, 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 just look at I'll just look at Gildax because we just clank on yeah. it. I ought to go in straight in. Yeah. All right, I gotta go ahead and make me a Constitution saving throw. Ooh. Oh wait. Mm. <laughs> you made a terrible. You decision. wanted the good stuff. Eleven. So Ooh. ten. As you just kind of like. Ugh, down, even though you had like like a you know like a cosmopolitan or something like mm. that, you taste the alcohol is like 
hits you like magical moonshine. Ooh, <laughs> moonshine. Mm. Huh. So the dark side of the moon, man. Hey, I'm gonna pause it here for a quick second. Yeah. So, what would you all wish to do? You all are sipping. You see, Ayana is. Starting to get real tipsy. I know me and Gildas are probably just drinking. <laughs> yeah, we also probably found a pool table. I mean, yeah, you play a couple rounds of pool. Yeah. A deep right. any money. Is it my break or your no. break? No. No, no honestly, we just, honestly, we just play basically for, exercises. How many? <laughs> we just play for bragging rights, and it's like, at this point, it's like this. How many do, how many wins do I have? 32, and how many wins do you have? 298. 298. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is just like, it'd be fun fact, Gildreds actually keep breaking all the damn sticks. <laughs> okay, you all, and I'll say for the sake of brevity, that you all, unless you all want to do something else, you all get your karaoke room, because the craftsman does have karaoke in the back. Oh, shit. You all sing your hearts out. You all may or may not get roaringly drunk, but after a while, Fluffy takes you guys back to the organization, and you all go to bed. For the night. Yes, Trust. Before you go to bed, is there anything you like to do? Um. As you all are coming back at like probably one or two o'clock in the morning. That's it. As we're walking home, I'm, I'm assuming that there's a point where we would all split up and go our separate ways. Yeah. When we do that, I would like to circle around and start following Gildart stealthily. Okay. Well, I'm already with him because we go in the same direction. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and make me a stealth check. check. That's fine. Do you want me to give a perception check? No, yeah. We'll see. Hey, wait, did I have a roll for seduction? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Oh, we roll. didn't seduce the bouncer! 17 plus my charisma, charisma is 18. 18. You definitely got his number, mm. and you definitely got to call me with a, with a heart. Uh, I wanted to hit on that elf woman that, you know. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a, roll me a, roll for seduction. Is this like the first time we've rolled for seduction in this game? No, I, in this one, yes. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, I, 17. Hey, plus 16. 16? She's, she's kind of into it. She does give you, she does give you her number. Hey. I think we just both look at each other. You got the numbers too. Yeah, yeah. hey. <laughs> what did you roll for yourself? 11. 11, yeah, you all are walking back as you're kind of like, Fist bumping, you see uh, Trast kind of like is almost kind of like trying to stealthily walk behind you. Has a reception this morning. I was gonna say, I'm looking at him. I was like, okay, seriously, why is he walking like that? Is he drunk? Not really gonna do anything about it. I'm just gonna make sure he doesn't get in my room. Okay, that's the same. We're in the same room. (laughs) We're we're near each other. Oh yeah, we're near each other. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the room there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you. You're walking, it doesn't seem like they've whispered a couple of things to them, okay. each other, but it doesn't seem like they've noticed. Oh, God. Dude, I swear, if you had told me that we would go from being in a desert to... Wait, hey, 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 hey. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Uh, let's go inside. Yeah. Have a little chat. Go in the room. Lock the door. Okay. Put some things on the door so it's kind of soundproof, like some pillows and stuff right there, just in the okay. way. Yeah. You Do you have like a music box or anything? There's like a small They're room. separate buildings. Right? No, no, oh, they, yeah. their rooms are close to yeah. each other. But, we're, but we're, yeah, we're in my room. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I just look, man, I swear, if you would have told me that we would have been yeah. walking. You see the them place. kind of go into Gildart's room and close the door. What do you do, Trust? Reattempt my stealth and just will kind of watch off. Okay, you're gonna try and do another cell check. Do I have a window? We have windows. <laughs> you guys don't have windows. Oh, that's oh. Fun with that. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's like an underground bunker. Yeah. What would you like to do? TikTok. I'm gonna try to pick a lot. Okay. Oh shit! <laughs> Go ahead and roll me a sleight of hand check. They're in there. Wait, wait, wait. Um, can now we roll perception? I'm giving it time. Yeah. Okay. Before uh, I pick the lock, my okay. right after you go in. I know. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. And then a stealth, so they don't wait, notice. Wait, yeah. What was the um? What was? What was what? It? it was oh, seventeen okay. to pick the lock. Okay. Eighteen for perception. Okay, I'll get my. Oh, doesn't matter. Um, here's what I want to do. 
Mm-hmm. I good at 24 for stealth. 24, okay. I'm about second. to say, here's my... All right. What? Yeah, you got a 24. What did you roll? Did I got an 18. 18, what did you get? I got an help action, I thought. Did you? Help you rolled. Action. That's okay. No, oh, well, you, you didn't tell me you were oh, giving okay, him a help. Fine. You rolled. It was 15. 15? All right, you guys seemingly don't... You seem like nobody noticed you. Uh, it doesn't seem like you guys hear anything. All right. I just want to mention the guild does then. For some reason, my throat's been bothering me lately. Yeah, so far, you don't think anybody suspected you. Go ahead and make me a perception check. Perception? Yep. Uh, 21. 21? Okay. Uh, you guys don't hear anything, so you are continuing your conversation as normal. It, for some reason, when we did the karaoke thing, something was bothering me in my voice. What? I don't know what it is. How far? They. Like how hiding, far are they like, from you? Off the wall and just listening in on them. Um, you kind of pull the door enough so it doesn't squeak. Uh, you do see that it's kind of barricaded a little bit of the door, uh-huh. like putting pillows and stuff. But you gather because you're, which are 21. They're probably about maybe like 20 or 30 feet away from you. <sighs> One big room. Okay. Yeah, it's a pretty big room. Yeah. I have a new thing. If they're within 12 feet of me, I can hear every word they say perfectly clear. Oh, okay. No matter what. Okay. Oh, nice. So you know what? Go ahead and roll me a luck check. Sure. Because I was like, you... you That's just a d20, right? Yep, just a d20. 12. 12? Yeah. yeah. No, unfortunately, they're about... Uh, they're about... They're just out of range. Okay. Oh, man. But with the perception 21, hopefully. It can Twenty, be. Yeah, 21, you can still definitely hear most of their conversation. I'm just looking at Gildarts. I got a question. Yeah. First off, why'd you barricade the door? Uh, don't trust trash to leave. Fair enough. Uh, two, does my voice sound funny to you? I'm going to use it. Okay, you're going to use thaumaturgy? Yeah. Okay, you hear... I'm going to tell Gildarts, though. I, if I were you, I'd cover your ear. You cover your ears? I just yeah. cover my ears immediately. Okay. Uh, what is your thaumaturgy? What is the words that you say with your thaumaturgy? Uh, wait, I can say words with it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, oh, it's a casting ability. Yeah, you're, speak, you're speaking really loudly. Yeah. <gasps> Kill dots, Can you hear me? <laughs> and it's just a loud, three times normal sound echo of my entire voice. Yeah, you, <laughs> you also hear this in the room. It's a little bit... Softer because they put padding up there, so it's a little bit. Does muffled. it close the door because of the voice? <laughs> no, it doesn't do anything else except make your voice bigger. That's it. Uh, but yeah, you hear, <laughs> you hear Zhao Ken say that. All right, okay, I heard some of that, and with that said, I've had way too much to drink. That's true. It's time for you to get out of my room. True. Do you want me and Zara to hold on to it then? The uh-huh. hand? No, keep the book though. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the only thing left is... What are we going to do tomorrow? I'm kind of now wondering what the Yosin's going to have us do. Um, well... Because I swear, this badge thing... We don't have a mission right now, so... I'm just looking at the badge. Does mine look the same as yours? It looks pretty similar to me. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to head back to my room then. Okay. You hear footsteps as someone is slowly starting to come out. You Towards the door? Yeah, towards the door. Yeah, you slide off. Uh, slide off, and Jao Ken, you walk out. And you I close this door you. behind me. Okay, you close the door behind you. And right, don't before, see anybody else. No, before I close, I was like, oh, remember to lock your door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you I close see, and I go back to my room. Yeah, you see Jao Ken walk as he goes into his room. And close it behind him. It's just... I knock on Gildart's door. Okay. Gildart, you hear a knock at your door. You open I open knock it on up. my door. Okay. You open it up, you see Trast. Hey, uh... I was hoping we could have a word. Sure. You have any uh, more ale? Nope. Oh. Water? Got plenty of that. I'll probably use some water. Plenty of that. Uh... All right. Mind if I come in? Sure. All you, buddy. Okay. You enter, and room kind of looks like yours. Uh, do you decorate your room in any way or no? Not particularly. Not particularly? That's, not anything special. Wait, right is now. the hammer on a coat rack? 
Yes. <laughs> it's just hanging up. Okay, you see that he has like the, the hammer on a on a coat rag, like laying sideways, not like having the handle part on yeah, the coat rag. It's like laying sideways, almost like a pedestal. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no, yeah. The coat but rack it, is heavier than the. Hammer. Yeah, like, surprisingly, the coat rack is heavier than the hammer. Yeah, so the coat rack it, is worthy. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> that's the sturdiest coat rack I've ever seen in existence. Magic yes. man, it's fucking wild. <laughs> anyway. He had Leonard put a spell on it. Yes. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to talk to you real quick because I think, think we got off on the wrong foot. I assumed we already patched things up, though. I, I know, but I just I feel terrible about how we started things. And this this actually was for you. I pull out the rose I bought. Oh, oh you're a bachelor. <laughs> you see Trask pulls out this very beautiful rose. Look, I, I'm I'm flattered, <laughs> but yeah, I'm kind of in the Ayana. <laughs> You're right. This was stupid, and I I crushed the rose in my hand, and I snapped my fingers, and I cast sleep on who? Gildarts. Okay. Go ahead. Oh man, I need to look up sleep because it's not a Constitution save. No, it is. I roll five d eight, and it's. That many hit points that I can affect. I didn't think I could get them both, so I was just waiting for him to leave. Go ahead and roll 5d8. Oh, shit. Yeah, but <laughs> not me, because I have the other one, but no. Go ahead, because no. this isn't a constitution saving throw. It is. I want to for a minute. Two. Oh, I was like, that's, that's three, right? What do you think you're doing? Four. Five. Calm down, Bill Cosby. <laughs> no, no, James. I need you to take no. out. No, yeah, you know what that was. Y'all thought I would. Bad. No, James. I need you to ex- uh, I need you problematic. To, problematic. I need you to get rid of that Bill Cosby. <laughs> that one's gotta go. I'm sorry, I got trapped so hard not to say. That's right. Six. You gotta stick with my seven. Seven. Seventeen. Oh, hang, hang on. Hang on. Wait. Okay, because I was like, I was looking at something, and it said sleep was 8d12. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. But no, it is 5d8. So what'd you get? Uh, 17. 17. What's your hit points? 26. Spell does not take effect. Mm, all right, I just storm out. Ouch! You just kind of... <laughs> Wait, do they oh, know? That's can why I'm checking. Really? That is why I'm checking. Yeah, it man. doesn't say they can tell. Do, 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 do. Wait, so how do you have to no. Okay. Not, no. I just imagine I got a I feel like I got a massive headache though. I'm just yeah, like, you Ouch. feel like your hangover starting to hit in, but no, you do not you are unaware of the fact that Trask guy to try to cast a spell on you. Hex girl. Hex girl. Hex girl. You are a hex girl. <laughs> go back to your room. I close the door and I lock okay. it again. As you close the door and you lock it again, you hear Fuck him up. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. As you can kind of hear the voices coming back again. Yeah, no, I'm tired. You can shut up for the night. Fuck him up, fuck him up, fuck him up, fuck him up! If you don't shut up, I will blow our brains out. Fuck him up! You can kind of start to hear them getting louder and louder. As you take... One point of second damage. As you can... It, with the combined of your hangover and the voices in your head starting to get louder, you hear them go, take the hammer. Take the hammer. Take the hammer. Take the hammer. I drop the hammer. Okay. Do you touch it? No, I dropped the hammer. Like I, I thought I still had the hammer in my hand, but I, like, I don't. No, I, it. I, was I, like, oh, right. I thought it was just a joke. No. Yeah. No. Oh, no. oh. That's why I said be careful with that. No, yeah. that. I assume that you had it on. No, I literally will put it on the ground. It literally stays like when it literally leans on the ground next to my bed. Okay. Yeah. Do you, so? Do you drop the hammer? Yeah. So you were touching it before. Yeah. As you kind of touch and you can kind of uh, hear... I was you, holding it the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. So as you kind of like go to drop the hammer, you feel something coming from it. It starts to feel a little almost like malleable in your hand. And you have a choice. Do you wish for the hammer to stay the same size as it is? Do you wish for it to get smaller or larger? <laughs> keep it the same size. It is. Keep it the same size? Okay. You kind of like hold on to that as you hear the voices getting louder and then they stop and you see the hammer hasn't changed size at all. 
Then nothing seems to have happened, but the voice has stopped. Mm. I dropped a hammer and I, lay down. I, <laughs> only thing I take off is my shoes and my jacket, and I just go to sleep. I know. You go to sleep. You have a dream, which we are definitely going to put in later. James, don't worry. We're going to do a little dream sequence with you. This will be fun. And But we're starting back up in five, four, three, two, one. So it is now the next day, as you can hear. Rise and shine, new recruits. Go away. No. Yes. Get up before I kick in the door. I mean, I'm already up. I just want you to go away. No, nope. get up so I can <laughs> kick in the door. I mean, then you have to... I'm going to kick in the door. Oh, for God's sake. Sarah, Five. can you open the door? Oh, yes. He goes, oh, hi, scary lady. He's like, oh, hey, kid, what's up? Ah! So... All right, Zara, close the door. You see Zara goes, oh, okay. He slowly <laughs> closes the door. You see Bloodhound just kind of puts her hand up and just he slowly starts... I look, I look at Bloodhound. Up. You didn't say how long I had to keep the door open. I mean, you can come in the, You can come out here or I can come in there. Choice is yours. All right, Zara, let's go. Grab our stuff. Oh, okay. And you see Zara grabs his stuff, and you see everybody is assembled back in the research lab where you guys met Penelope. I'm going to go get guild oh. in case. I was like, hey, by any chance, did you get guild arts yet? You know, I tried knocking, I tried kicking in the door, but seems like he's still asleep. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll get him. Okay. You go over to him. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Okay. Do you, do you start singing that or do you cast Thaumatur? No, I'm going to cast Thaumatur. Okay. <laughs> you. Cowboys teachers here! I kip up out of bed and start doing the push ups that I know I do in the morning. <laughs> Gotta hit 500. Gotta hit 500. Don't want to die. Don't want to die. Don't want to die. Don't want to die. Don't wanna you, die. You, you, you hear a knock at your door. Yes. I did my push ups. Please don't hurt me. I, I mean, I didn't plan on hurting you. Just letting you know that uh, Penelope's going to take you through the ropes to show you what cool shit you guys get. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, I can... No, nah, no, nah, you can finish your push knocks when we come back. Come on. My, my headache's gone. I mean, I already did mine since I was already up. <laughs> okay. Early the door's still closed. I open the door, but I, I get dressed, I open the door, and then okay. I grab my hammer, but I'm just okay. hesitant to grab it at first. Okay. Like You're that. a little hesitant, you all kind of see, and you kind of grab it. It still feels pretty malleable, but you don't hear any of the voices. I just look at him and I'm like, you alright? <laughs> Peachy. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't drink that much. As you all say that, and head back to the uh, equipment lab, you see Penelope's kind of waiting and goes, ah! Well, you all are here, so I guess that's good. Did you all enjoy your first night? It was good. That's good. It was good. Hey, you guys here? went to the cra- yeah. Everyone's oh, here. Oh shit! Right. Leonard's a little beat up, I think. Oh, well, that's, that's no good. Leonard, are you feeling? You feeling alright? Man, he he got chocolate milk drunk. Oh, that's oh, something yeah, you I never heard, want to do. Yeah, I heard that's heights. something that happens yeah. with turtles. And you know? I also found out the hard way. I'm afraid of heights. It's, yeah, it, it, you was, know, it was a hard time. Lactose and heights don't really work well, you know. And I can understand. Kind of gives you a little, a little bad of a tummy feeling in your guts. God. I had the rumblies. Like, you yeah. should have seen Ayana on that karaoke stage. So. Oh man, I can believe it. You're the you're you your talents are like singing, is I, right? Is I hungover? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a little bit. She's like, yeah, I'm just... And she feels the side of her head. Mm-hmm. And there's no hair there. She shaved the side of her head last night. <laughs> and she's she like, goes, what? Oh, I'm, you hear Penelope go, ah, oh, you know, I mean, I, I like the look. The look is nice. It, um, huh. No wonder why I thought you looked normal from the side. <laughs> Gil Darts is like this. I do remember one thing. You told me to hold on to your hair, and I handed back to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but you told me to. And she's just like, she's like in awe, but at the same time, she kind of don't care, but still like, huh? What did I do? Well, <laughs> what else is, don't we remember? Weirdness aside, and you see, uh, she goes, "Come over here, real quick," and you see that she walks you over to what appears to be almost kind of like a, a locker standing by itself, and you see that it has a uh, a slot fit for your badges and you see that she takes her badge puts it in the slot and you hear a voice go recognize 
Penelope Summerfield. <laughs> Recognize. <A-K-A. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> he recognizes gang right yeah. there. <laughs> and you, you look at real, real unfamiliar. Period. <laughs> Jamie, you can cut that out. No, keep the recognize. <laughs> no. Keep the recognize. No, 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 you no, you no, said no, it exactly no. like that. You did not say James, recognize. You said know. recognize. James cut it out, so I have to start again. You hear the locker go, recognize Penelope Summerfield. Fix it. Authorize. And you see the locker opens up, and you see it folds out from the inside. And, and you see this thing is a lot bigger on the inside. And you see in the middle this what almost kind of looks like your official bureau uniform, but it looks more like a almost like a motorcycle. Um, what's the word? Not a onesie, a motorcycle um, suit. Yeah, almost like the leather jackets. Yeah, not yeah. the. It's like a full ensemble, oh, no. like a full one piece on, like a um, yeah. jumpsuit. Oh. Yeah. You see that it's this very beautiful, like, um, cloth and leather, like, a, like again, like a, um, a motorcycle jumpsuit. You see that the front of it is almost kind of has this bib where it's double-breasted, so you see the <coughs> buttons kind of make a octagonal shape to the bottom and, always, and go down to the chest. And he goes, this is a little bit more advanced of the armor that you guys had when you were in training. Um, instead of it just blocking slashing damage, it also blocks slashing and piercing, which means it's really hard for you to get cut, and it's especially a little bit harder for you to get stabbed and shot at. Huh. So work against dogs? It's if they bite you. Does it, does it, what about when I'm in a rage? And stretches with you. Okay. What about bros? That's <laughs> bludgeoning damage. That wouldn't huh. do anything. Is that thing fire resistant? Damage? What if it's a sharpened broomstick? You can get it fire resistant. It doesn't normally come fire resistant. I'll take the fire resistant. Well, I'm not done doing my speech. So. Just for future. <laughs> Fair enough. We, we can talk about that afterwards. She goes, but also the special feature is obviously there are going to be chances where you're not going to wear a motorcycle jacket or a motorcycle suit everywhere but and you see that she actually kind of like takes a badge out of her locker and like puts it in like a little slot in the uh in like the belt part of the uh suit and you see that she taps on the chest and you see it shifts into another outfit Hmm. and you see she taps it again shifts into another outfit and she says this can hold up to five designs. So, you can switch out your clothes on the fly if need be. Just tap the chest. Ayana is gagged right now. She's like, yeah! But she's also probably gagged from actually trying to hold her throw up in, too. She's like, yeah! yeah. Oh. yeah. She's like, oh, no, please. Please do not throw up on my phone. By the way, referring back uh, to the other part, you do know James is not cutting that out. It's James. I'm telling James he needs to fucking cut it out. If not, then I'm going to tell him to fucking cut it out. <laughs> now I will not release this video until he fucking cuts it out. <laughs> James, you can cut out that part, too. <laughs> Going on to the next, you see a small little... Uh, ha- almost kind of like what you would see, like a ski mask, like the eyewear and like the facial mask. She goes, this is going to be mostly your bread and butter. Unfortunately, it doesn't shift like the suit, but basically this is going to give you a tactical and investigative advantage. The She go, uh, she taps on the eyes. So it has a built-in investigative mode, so it helps you see things better in case you kind of miss something. The ears, the muffs, have built-in communication devices that can be linked up to five people. Can the ear muffs change? Yeah, you can change the earmuffs, change the look of them. Well, I'm sorry, like, is it something more stealthy if we need the stealth? Can we change it to that? Yeah, well, like I said, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like skiing earmuffs where it has like the headset over. It's more like um, if you've ever played or seen Overwatch, if you've ever seen what Soldier Seventy. Okay, it's basically That's a. It's basically like a visor, but the sides of it have like places where you can put your ears and then a mask. It's kind of like the scouter. Like from data? The, like the sc- 
Yeah, like data from Star Trek. Or like, or the actually, scouters, um, the scouters from DBZ. Kind of like that too. Okay, uh, but that's still not very stealthy because if somebody sees us, they'll awesome. be like, "Oh, well, that's obviously." So sort of well, obviously, device. that's when you use it in situations where you don't. That's what I'm saying. It can it change to something like that. Yeah, of course it can fucking oh. change. That's what I was asking. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just said like that. The, with like a sleeker design. Yeah. Remember, so there's cameras on the suit. And then yeah. Like that. Okay. Yeah, nice. this, this this can change, guys. It's. Oh, this is all in character. Yeah, I know. That's why she's like, "This this can change, guys." It's, okay. Oh, I mean, cool. I'm not. Not done with my spiel again, but... Oh, right. Sorry, we have many questions. That's yeah, fine. You questions. can save them afterwards. Jeez, it. And you see that she's like, now I know what you said I was talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, I was looking at that. The mouthpiece. Very important. It is a filtration system. Anytime you are in a place where it has very toxic inhalants, this will help you out. However, you, as mostly with everything, you can upgrade it to make it stronger. For now, it is just the basic model. And last but not least, a couple of things. You see that she brings a kind of like a little harness out, like a bandoil, uh, bandolier. She goes, interdimensional bandolier. Small pockets on the chest hold each probably about 20 pounds of stuff, no greater than 20 square feet. She goes um, to the side pouches. She goes, Hip pouches can hold two flat can hold two types of kits at the same time, and best part, and you see that she points to the Van Doyler, the um, holsters that are on the chest, on the back, and on like the thigh strap. She goes, quick draw holsters. Basically, you place any item that you want in these holsters. You can pull them out willy nilly as a free action. <sighs> and last but not least. The creme de la creme and the piece of the resistance, your, your last piece of equipment that you are going to need. And you see that she arranges a couple of boxes in front of you all, and she goes, open and see. Hmm. Well, um, open before open. I open mine, mm-hmm. I will have I'll a question about the breathing apparatus. Yeah. Uh, would that, if upgraded or now, can it help with breathing underwater, or would it help if upgraded? It would help if upgraded. All right. For now, I don't see you guys. I don't, at least, I don't think Yasen is going to send you all on an underwater mission soon, but I've always been proven wrong. Anytime you guys find also really cool shit in the field and you're unsure, if it's cursed or nothing, you can always take it to me. I can always analyze it in my lab, and I can always transfer it over to anything, and especially for your, uh, what's in your boxes. Huh. Opens well, my box. I open my box, too. You all see open these box. very beautiful set in watches that almost kind of like a um i guess like almost like a small little bracer slash bracelet but it's not super big or chunky she goes this is your gauntlet of grimoire or i like to lovingly refer to it as a spell watch and i have sheets for all of you because i basically said i don't know one that's not a sheet. Two. That's a packet. Shut the fuck up. Three. <laughs> Four. And five. She goes, so. Oh, why was I ready to stand How your watch works, and you see that she presses a button in the middle, and almost kind of like that scene from Civil War, she takes her... A widow? You see that she takes, uh, presses her thumb and kind of rakes it out, and you see the watch turns into a, like a full-fledged gauntlet with like full metal fingers and everything. And she goes, "While it's active, make it hit harder." But, um, but, and you see as she kind of like looks at it and kind of turns it to you guys, it has different functions. You have ability to stun and do some damage to your enemies. To deflect some blows off of yourself in case you're in a good situ- in case you're in a life or life or uh, death situation, you can try and ensnare somebody that you're trying to capture, spending a flare, basically trying to do first level CPR, and to boost your natural physical capabilities. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind though, these have a certain number of charges at any day. You expend your charges; they don't come back until you rest the next day. But it is also going to take time for you all to get to know them. So 
I highly suggest you all take the time to kind of learn how everything works. Okay. Basically, you guys have to attune to your equipment. Start playing with it. I just start, I do that, but I'm also making notes of certain things of like things that I might want to change with it. Yeah, um, I start playing with it. Do, do, okay. do they change colors? Yeah, you do. They do. Okay, I'm changing mine to dark blue. Okay. You okay. change the watch to dark blue? Yeah. Okay. I'm changing all my equipment to dark blue. Okay, that's fine. Say mine just uh, she goes yeah. now. This is the point where you guys have any questions or comments. Only about fifty. No, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> I got time now. Oh. Wow. Anybody else? I'm just, I'm just looking at everything. <laughs> it's like, um, like on video games mm -hmm. when you're picking your character's clothes. I am just scrolling through the outfits. <laughs> oh, every single outfit. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, yeah, you, she goes. You know, you can change the outfit. Like, you, if you don't like these five selections, you just have to take a day to actually like change out the outfit. So you just have to put it in your locker and change whatever outfit you want. Ooh. I just thought it was weird. But she's still <laughs> just doing it. Like Yeah, you just like have on this suit and you're just like changing the different outfit. She goes, I mean, that's what it what it does. Question. Yeah. The ears of communication, is it one channel? Yeah, it's one ch one secure arcane channel that you all share. However, all if anybody Yes. Mm -hmm. It can link up to devices that are only encrypted for bureau agents. However, if one person gets out of range, then they won't be able to link up with anybody. Oh, are we allowed to later on choose or turn it off, and then we can choose the other persons to go back on? And if you or want to have it more specific as a two-way communication with somebody else, that would definitely increase the range, but I, unless I got anything otherwise, Yasen told me that... Well, you all are working in a squadron of five, so... No, no, I know that. I just you all need to question. come here. No, no, I, had a, I just had that question. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> As for going for your equipment, not only do you have access to the Bureau's basic weaponry, but you want to get anything modified, and you want to get anything like, I don't know, maybe like a minigun or a grenade launcher, get that modified to do some cool shit, maybe a shotgun with six barrels to shoot at. You can do it, but it's going to cost you a little bit of a pretty penny. Mm -hmm. I try to keep my rates low, however, because I am technically an independent contractor, I only kind of in the world working because I have a deal with Yasen going on, but you find any cool shit, find any magical cool shit, definitely add it to your arsenal. Mm -hmm. what if, we, if we bring any cool shit back, will we get paid for it? Mm, I... If you'd like, I do have a list of things if you all would look out for. Um, if you do bring back the stuff that I kind of have on the list when you're kind of going out on missions, I'm willing to shell out either a little bit of coin or I put that to credit to any new thing that you guys are trying to do. Oh. I'm I'm pretty flexible like that. Nice. <sighs> um, you have a card. Switching out her outfits, but now she's trying to see how acrobatic she can be in them. You kind of switch them out, and it still feels like you're still wearing the motorcycle suit. It just looks like you have these different outfits. So you're actually, and you kind of like all try them on. They are fairly like breathable, and they are like incredibly flexible, and they do actually fit. Even with you, Sir Leonard, it does actually conform to your body. Oh, nice. I was, I was wondering that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's all... <laughs> Should I take off my shell, put it on, put the shell over it? <laughs> no, actually, do you do you try that on, or do you actually just try to put it on with the shell on? I want to try it like that. <laughs> you put it on with the shell on, and you don't have any issue. Nice. Yeah, no, it's mad in the weave in it, it's arcan, arcanly enchanted, so you can modify whatever you want. I start, yeah, I start doing, I like, she's very bendy, but I'm slightly bendy. I start doing moves, and I'm bigger than her, so I would try to test out my flexibility. Yeah, yeah. you see that the suit gives you, like, full range of motion. Yeah. For the uh, instant barrier of deflect, is that, can that barrier be, um, because uh, does it follow the same rules, the bigger the, bar the thinner areas are? No, so basically the instant barrier is basically if you, someone... Uh, if someone ever casts like a shield spell, it's basically that instantaneous moment for you to deflect. It's so not it's a just barrier. One size yeah, barrier. it's not a barrier that like stays up and absorbs the damage. It's like ah fuck, I and need like something to deflect the blow. Can the barrier change shape if you needed to or no? Mm. Like, but depending on certain size. Of she them. goes hmm. I mean, normally we have it sit for like 
personnel size. Did you want to make it bigger, make it smaller? I, I'll, I'll draw you notes. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. And schematics. Yeah, no, also tell me how this is. This is the Mark II, so it's somewhat field tested, but we haven't had a new, couple of new recruits in like forever. So, I have a question. guinea pigs. Yes and no. I have it's, a question. Like, I don't mind. Seems like I'm wearing like nothing 60. at all. 60. Nothing at all. all. Nothing at all. all. Stupid sexy Ayana. <laughs> I, I was there just telling, you have a business card. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you see that she pulls it out. Thank you. <laughs> and you see that it just says fix it in the Tin Man. <laughs> she, I was <laughs> told that I may be able to find something that could f- more focus my arcane abilities. You see that she's like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You were, uh, you're the one you sent was to, or, um, Vakery was sent out for, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, actually, I think I do have something over here. Um, and you see that she kind of like, has, she's like, where the fuck did I put? She goes, Tin Man! And she goes, um, yes, fix it. Do you know where I put the thing? I believe so. Let me go look for it. And you see, he kind of like, <laughs> that's that, let me use my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go find it, and you see, she, doosh, she, doosh, and the war, the warforge kind of trumps off, goes to a top shelf, and goes, ah, I have successfully found it, and you see, he pulls out a small lens that actually can fit on the top of your watch, and you see, she hands it to, he hands it to you, and she goes, that, that will be your arcane foci, and the great thing about it is. It fits directly right over your watch. Perfect. I put it on. Yep. And basically, it's your arcane folk eye, so now you can cast spells. Ayana starts doing cartwheels and shit, and she <laughs> lands right in front of the garbage and does like a pose, and then Amy just throws up into the garbage. <laughs> you see, uh, Tin Man, you see uh, Penelope, or uh, Fix It, pulls up a, like, a 9 card. You see Tin Man brings up a 7.5. <laughs> I like it. I, I, I take Penelope's and flip it. <laughs> you see Penelope flips it back to a nine. She goes, I, see, I, look at the, I, I, look, I look at the seven, I take a mark, and I make it an eight. You see uh, Tim Tim Man takes it down, bang. looks at you, takes the marker, crushes it, wipes off the seven, and he goes... Don't touch my fucking scorecard. <laughs> <laughs> I love to. You guys don't like jokes very much, do you? I mean, we try. I mean, we like jokes, but like, we can't really joke around when there's, you know, high bunches of chemicals everywhere, you know? So. I mean. <laughs> I mean, shit, you guys don't want to. You guys definitely do not want to know why we have the grenade limit. <laughs> Oh, why do we have a good name? Oh, <laughs> I'm just out of so, curiosity. Funny you should ask. So, the reason why... And I imagine this is a very, very gruesome story. Yeah. So, the reason why... Long story short. We had a couple of recruits. One recruit thought it'd be funny that his whole thing could be like, Oh, I'm just going to be the guy who throws grenades and got a shit ton of grenades. This was before we actually got the simulation. And so, Bloodhound was the one who was running that. Um, but... Something happened The during a live explosion. Somebody punctured his grenade. All of them exploded. He died. Half of his squadron died. And Bloodhound had to be in the hospital for a week. Jesus. Yeah, that's why we have a... That's the only reason why we have a three grenade per limit. Because three gr- three grenades is practically surviving. Yeah, Kildars is like, huh, walked over to that trash can. <laughs> This is why I told you you shouldn't drink that much. I mean, I woke up fine. But, yeah, that's uh, that's really all I got for you guys. Until then, uh, wait around to your next mission. Honestly, I'm and just going to hang, I'm, I'm gonna hang out. I'm going to hang out with you guys so, for a bit. So, with these um, quick to the quick infirmary, draws, quick draw holsters, mm-hmm. is it just weapons in there, or so, can it be anything? She, ah, she goes, that's a good question. So, you can either put, if you have, like, Excuse me, a potion of healing, a flask of healing. Um, it could be like a like a magic wand that you have. It could be really anything. Most of the time, most agents put weapons in there because they want to like keep their weapons close. But you know, you can practically put anything in there, and then you're able to quick draw it out. The pockets conform to whatever size. So if you put a rifle in the back, obviously the rifle is going to fit better in the back than on the thigh or like underneath your arm. But, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. 
She All puts right. her she puts her hand in the holster. She has, tries, to, <laughs> tries to pull her hand out of herself. Yeah, you you pull your hand out. It's fine. It's easy. It's easy access. Just like breezy. <laughs> this is gonna get interesting. <laughs> she goes. Um, also, another neat trick of your suit. If they ever get dirty, they ever need to get cleaned, you just tap the chest three times. Breast digitation cleans it up. Ooh. Like, how does it? <laughs> Yeah, you all tap it and you see the layer of dirt that was starting to collect just psh, burns away. Ooh. And vomit. Because <laughs> yeah. there's two of us throwing up They now. drank a lot. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to the infirmary. Uh, now, about that fire resistant. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that. You are going to the infirmary? Yes. Okay. Uh, who are you saying? Bloodhound. Okay. Do you knock on her office door? Yes. She goes, oh, yeah, uh, come on in. I'm just doing some paperwork. Do we figure out anything? Yeah, um, I was doing a little bit of research, and are you sure they haven't said anything else? Because, unfortunately, I don't, that's really the only theory I got going. They started getting very malice recently. Malice? What do you mean? Like, trash came into my room Mm -hmm. the other night, and I got this massive headache from drinking, and it's like, Grab the hammer, telling me to fight him and hurt him and stuff. Huh. She is gonna roll an arcana check. Oh boy. She goes. At advantage because you're the DM? I was just gonna put it as a straight roll, but it, since you said advantage, sure. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> oh, look at those brownie points. Um, you see that she goes, hmm, that doesn't sound right. Maybe the voices were protecting you somehow? Because it only sounds like they only come when you're raging, right? At least from the last instance you told me. Raging or in danger. So maybe they thought you were in danger? Hmm. Well, what did it What did it feel like, this headache? I don't know, it almost felt like, like this massive pain in my head. Massive pain. <laughs> That's a headache. And did it kind of feel like your eyelids were getting a little heavy? Yeah, like so. Like I was about to fall asleep. You see, uh, Den Mother's kind of like scratching her chin and just kind of stops and goes, "Oh, I uh, don't know how to tell you this, but." I think Trash trying to put you to fucking sleep. What? Sounds like to me that's a, a failed sleep spell. Oh, that mother. And fuck. that's where we're going to end. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the oh my god, that's all there is. <laughs> Thank you all once again Jared. for. Just like a Spider Man movie, mother. <laughs> yep. <Jared. laughs> then, like the intro, the uh, the ending to It's Always Sunny starts. I'm like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, do, 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 do. I'll be the roundabout. All right. I'll be the turn. So, with that being said, everybody, thank you again for listening in. I know this was a little bit longer, but I'm trying to wrap this up as much as we can. But. With all of that being said, everybody, please have a wonderful rest of your night. Please go check started. out, support your local Indians, and go check us out at realitysocialconstruct.wordpress.com. Say goodnight, everybody. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Have a good time. Join our heroes next week as they continue to investigate the dark corners of Colvair, lurking closer than you may believe.